Megan! Megan, are you there? It's really important and urgent. Hurry up and answer me. Don't leave me hanging here. I'm sorry. I really don't have time to talk right now. I'm super busy with work and I can't afford any distractions. Busy? What are you talking about? I never see you leave the house. Aren't you just like a full-time housewife or something? You know, cooking, cleaning, taking care of the kids, that kind of stuff. How hard can that be? My brother must be very stressed and miserable to marry a useless wife like you. Hey, you watch your mouth. I've told you a bunch of times already that I work from home. I have a remote job as a web designer and I have deadlines and projects to finish. And before you ask, yes, my husband and I basically make the same amount of money. We both have successful careers and we're both very happy with our arrangement. Well, one, who said I was going to ask? And two, I really doubt that. I mean, isn't he a manager at some Fortune 500 company or something like that? Are you really trying to say that you make the same amount as someone with that kind of prestigious and high paying job? Well, if that's true, then you guys must be really swimming in money over there, huh? Man, you better be lying or something because I am so jealous right now if that's true. How about sharing a little bit of that with me? I wouldn't mind a weekly allowance, you know? Just a small token of your generosity. What are you talking about? Does that have anything at all to do with why you messaged me in the first place? You said you needed to talk to me about something important and urgent. What is it? Oh, come on. Don't change the subject. I know you got more money than you know what to do with. Why can't I have some too? You're my sister-in-law, after all. You should help me out when I'm in need. Maybe because the money we have, we worked really hard to earn. We didn't just get lucky or inherit it from someone. We studied hard, got good grades, went to college, got degrees, applied for jobs, worked our way up the ladder, and saved up for our future. We didn't spend it on frivolous things or waste it on bad habits. We made smart choices and we're proud of them. I mean, I know you had that part-time job for a little bit while you were in high school, but have you ever even had a job after that? That's what I'm saying. That's why I need money. Because I don't have a job and I don't want one either. They're boring and stressful and they take up all your time and energy. Besides, my boyfriend and I want to travel somewhere and we need money to do that. We want to see the world and have fun and enjoy life while we're young and beautiful. Then do what we did. Find a job, work hard, save up, and then you can go on your trip. That's how most people do it. Are you serious? But that's so lame. I could never do something as uncool as that. Are you calling having a job uncool? It's not that I disagree with you, but I really worry for your future if that's how you think of working. How are you going to support yourself when your boyfriend dumps you or when your parents stop giving you money? Well, duh. That's because I'm just going to marry rich and never have to worry about any kind of lame stuff like that. That's my dream and my plan. And don't worry about my boyfriend dumping me or my parents cutting me off. They love me too much to do that. What? Is that really your plan? Just marry rich? Has it ever occurred to you that someone that rich might want someone just as motivated to work and succeed? What? And are you trying to say that I'm not that kind of person or something? Are you trying to insult me or hurt my feelings? Because if you are, then you're doing a terrible job at it. Well, I know you don't have a job, and I'm pretty sure you never do any kind of housework either, so... And you're cooking. Well, remember what happened last time you tried to make something for the family, right? We all just ended up ordering takeout after one bite. <laughs> you said you wouldn't bring that up. That's not fair. And remember that healthy dish you tried to make that one time? It was that stew that you just dumped a whole bottle of vinegar and that terrible health powder into? Oh man, that was a classic. But anyways, I guess my point was to say that you probably don't cook much around the house either. You probably just order food or eat out all the time. It wasn't the whole bottle, you know. Besides, we'll just hire a maid for all those kinds of things, so problem solved. Yes, yes, you're very clever. All right, well, do what you want, I suppose. Anyways, I have to deal with some clients, so I can't text anymore. See ya. That's fine. I was going to head over to your place to hang out anyways. What? You mean, like right now? I'm sorry, but I have a couple of friends coming over tonight. Let's hang out another day, okay? Oh, don't worry. I don't mind. They won't bother me at all. That's not what I was worried about. I'm the one who's going to be bothered. You always crash my parties and make everything awkward and annoying. Do you remember the last time you went to my house while my friends were here? You made fun of our hobbies and interests and acted like you're better than us, which caused trouble and drama and ruined the mood for everyone. I already said it'll be fine. See you in a little bit.
Flora, where are you right now? Where I am is none of your business. You are my sister-in-law, not my mother. It's not your duty to keep tabs on me and monitor my every move. I don't have time to argue with you. Tell me the truth. Did you sneak into my driveway and take the Ferrari that was parked there for a joyride? I need to know right now. Answer me. What's the big fuss? Why are you freaking out? It's no big deal. My boyfriend and I just thought it would be fun to take it for a little spin. That's all. What? A spin, huh? Yep. The wind and sun just feel amazing. We didn't do anything wrong. We just wanted to have some fun. And where, may I ask, did you get the keys for that car? Well, when I was leaving your place, I saw the key case lying there in a bag, and I just kind of helped myself. I thought you wouldn't mind if I borrowed it for a while. You wouldn't even notice if one was missing. You just rummaged through a bag you found at my place? It wasn't some random bag, it was yours. And I figured since we were sisters, what's yours is mine kind of thing, you know? Sharing is caring and all that. Flora, that bag wasn't mine. I don't own a bag like that. Oh, really? Oh, well. I guess it doesn't really matter exactly whose bag it was. I mean, who could even worry about the small details like that when the keys to a Ferrari are sitting right there in front of you? It's like fate or something. Well, you better start worrying about them. Anyways, my boyfriend and I wanted to pretend honeymoon, so that's why we took it. We'll be back in a few days. You took that car so you two could go have a pretend honeymoon? That's what I said. And this guy says he goes to Harvard, so, you know... He'll be set for life. Maybe we'll even get married for real one day. Of course, if that were the case, then we could go abroad for our honeymoon, of course. I can picture it now, globe trotting from one fancy hotel to the other with my new husband. It sounds dreamy, doesn't it? And now we're getting to practice that in this Ferrari. I would have never guessed this would be happening to me in a thousand years. Today might be the day I ask him what he thinks about, you know, tying the knot. Stop talking about your fake honeymoon and return that car right now. Yuck. Chill out. Flora, this isn't a game. I am being serious. Don't let things go too far. Why are you always trying to spoil my fun, huh? How come you never told me you own such a cool car? Why did I just find out about this today? Flora, the car isn't mine. Wait, are you serious? It's not your car? No, it belongs to one of my friends who was at my place when you came over. You're not talking about the one really poor looking lady, are you? That lady is not poor in the slightest. Well, if she really was rich enough to afford this car, then how come she wasn't wearing any expensive clothes or anything when I was there, huh? Because she's just the type of person who likes to spend money on cars and not clothes. Oh, I see what you're doing here. You're just jealous and you don't want me to have any fun. I get that you didn't want to lend the car out, but there is no need to lie to me about who really owns it. Oh my god, I literally cannot deal with you right now. Just bring the car back now, okay? Sorry, we already hit the freeway. I think it's a little late for that now. The freeway? Just where are you planning on taking it? Don't worry about it. Daniel is a great driver. It'll all be okay. Has he ever even driven a sports car like that before? Nope, he says it's his first time. And you took it on the freeway? I know, isn't it so cool? Just bring that car back now, okay? How many times do I have to say this isn't my car? Why are you so stubborn? Nah, we're good. After all, we need to use this car to get around on our fake honeymoon. This isn't a game, Flora. I'm being serious. Oh, and one more thing. I borrowed your credit card. <laughs> Hold on a second. You did what? Yeah, I borrowed your credit card. Why didn't you tell me about that either? I didn't know you were a black card holder. I thought they only gave those out to celebrities and famous people and stuff. You must be really rich and successful, huh? What do you mean, black card? I don't have a black card. It's bad to keep lying to your sister-in-law like this, you know? You should be more honest and generous with me. After all, we're family, right? Wait, I am being serious. Do you have a problem with reading comprehension? That card is not mine. It belongs to someone else. Anyways, we'll be taking both your card and your car for our little escapade. We already stopped to get lots of clothes and other supplies for our trip with the card. And of course, we spared no expense and got all branded stuff. I think we've already spent like 20 grand or something. You've spent $20,000 using that card already? Yeah, and it doesn't seem like we're even scraping the limits of what this card can do. Who knew you could do so much with a black card? Man, you are persistent. Look, Megan, I'm trying to enjoy my fake honeymoon here, so I'm going to block you until we get back. Flora, you better not! Too late. Bye-bye! Mm -hmm. 
Megan, pick up the phone. It's an emergency. I'm not joking around. I'm being serious. You have to answer me right now. What do you want? I'm busy right now. Can't you leave me alone for once? I can't use your credit card anymore. It stopped working. Was it a fake or something? Did you trick me into taking a fake card? Was the black card you stole a fake? Yeah. Daniel and I are trying to check into our hotel, but they won't accept our card. We made them try again and again, but they said the payment wasn't being accepted. That means that the card was a fake or something, right? Oh man, this is bad. What should we do? Flora, you can't use that card because the owner froze it. They realized someone stole their card and they called the credit card company to stop any more purchases from being made on that card. What? They froze the card? How could they do that? Yeah, it's that thing when you call the credit card company to stop any more purchases being made on that card. It's a very common and sensible thing to do when someone steals your card. I know what freezing a card means. But if the card is frozen, then that means we can't check into our hotel. And the room I booked was supposed to be one of the best suites this place could offer. It had a jacuzzi and a balcony and a mini bar and everything. It was supposed to be our dream vacation. Maybe just try paying for the reservation with your own money instead. But we only have a little bit of cash on us right now. We spent most of it on gas and food and souvenirs and stuff. We thought we could use your card for everything else. I see. And if it was a hotel suite that I'm sure costs quite a bit, huh? Maybe just go to the bank and take out some money to pay the deposit. You know, the bank where you have an account with your own money. I didn't bring any of my bank cards on this trip. Wow. Are you serious? Going out to such luxurious places, but you didn't bring money, but only care about using a black card that's not yours? How irresponsible and selfish can you be? I didn't think I'd need to since I was going to be using your card instead. That's why I need you to go unfreeze the card right now. Please, please, Megan, please. You're my only hope. Look, I tried to explain this to you earlier, but that card doesn't belong to me. But that wasn't a lie? You weren't trying to trick me or prank me or something? Flora, open your eyes. Look at the card. What name is inscribed on it? Is my name Megan Flynn? But I thought I looked at it before I took it. Let's be real here. You barely read at a fourth grade level. So let's not pretend literacy is your strong suit. Don't be freaking rude. I know how to read. Okay, then take out the card. Hold it up to your face and reread the name printed on the card. But that... it can't be. I just glanced at it and I thought it said Megan. But it really says Megan. And the last names are the same. How can this be? It's quite the coincidence, right? Actually, that's how we both became friends, because we basically had the same name. We joked about how if we were a couple, people might have trouble telling us apart on paper. So then who the heck is Megan? Why don't you try asking your boyfriend who she is? Why would Daniel know who she is? Just try asking him, okay? Maybe he'll tell you something interesting. What the heck? When I asked him about Megan, he took the car keys right out of my hand and ran out the door. He didn't even say anything. He just looked at me with this guilty expression and bolted. He left me here alone with no money and no car and no hotel room. Well, that's too bad. Maybe you should have thought twice before stealing someone else's card and car. And you should have been more careful about who you trust. Hey Flora, were you able to catch Daniel in the end? Did you find out why he ran away from you like that? Well, you could say that. But the truth is that he just crashed the Ferrari. What do you mean he crashed it? How did that happen? Did he get chased by the cops or something? Right as he was trying to make his getaway, he got carried away, slammed on the pedal, and drove right into the parking lot fence. The front of the car has a little dent, but at least Daniel was totally fine. He didn't get hurt or anything. Do you realize what you've just done? What's the big deal? I just do not get you. I mean, just take it to the mechanic and it'll be fine, right? You're always freaking out over the tiniest stuff. It literally drives me crazy. You can't control my life. Look, I'm glad that your boyfriend was okay, okay? But this is not just some little mistake. This is a huge mess. Besides, have you even figured out just why your boyfriend panicked and tried to run when you asked him about Megan? Oh, actually, now that you mention it, I forgot to in all the excitement. But anyways, can't you just tell me what's up? Why are you being so secretive and mysterious? Daniel is Megan's younger brother. He's a what? I never knew that. How come he never told me? Do you remember that one time, I can't recall exactly when, but there was this dinner party I was going to that you weren't invited to, 
but snuck in anyways? Well, that's where you first met Daniel, right? What does that have to do with anything? Wait, was that place Daniel's sister's house? Yes, it was. Anyways, maybe you've heard from Daniel, but Megan and him have a pretty strange relationship, so that's probably why he flipped out when you told him that the cards you've just borrowed actually belong to his older sister, Megan. So that means that the car also belongs to Megan? Yes, that's what I've been trying to tell you. The car and the card are both hers. Come again? Okay, I'll try to explain everything from the top one more time. Neither the Ferrari you were driving, nor the black credit card you were using, belong to me. Both of those things that I just listed above belong to Megan. Wait, so then her own little brother doesn't even know what kind of car she drives? Well, she just picked up the car about three days ago or something. I'm not sure Daniel ever knew she owned it to begin with. At least that's what Megan is telling me right now. Megan is there with you. Yup. And is she mad at all? I would describe her as very mad, actually. And after using her card to buy $20,000 worth of crap on top of all the fees you'll have to pay to take the card into a specialist who deals with imported cars, you're probably looking at about $100,000 in damages, at least. $100,000? And that would be the low end of how much you might owe at the end of this. That is why Megan has just been furious since this morning, really. I mean, who knows what she'll do to you both when you get back. Honestly, she's had a pretty scary face all day. It's starting to creep me out. I'd be worried. It's that bad, huh? Seems that way, yes. And one more thing. What else could you possibly have after all that? Well, we got a call from the hotel you two were just trying to check in at. The hotel called you? What did they want to talk about? Well, Megan's husband actually manages a resort company, and it turns out he's pretty close with the owner of that hotel. So he got a call right away when someone using his wife's card showed up. Wait, what are you getting at? What are you going to say next? I'm getting there. Anyways, I guess the police showed up to the hotel to ask about who this person with his wife's card was and was asking Megan's husband if they wanted to pursue any legal action. I mean, I won't lie. She's not a lady you want as your enemy. Anyways, on that note, I gotta go. See ya. After dealing with the crashed car, Flora and Daniel finally came back home, both looking like dead men walking. They were exhausted, scared, and ashamed of what they had done. Megan was, of course, waiting for them in a swiveling chair we have, just so she could turn around dramatically to greet them as the two of them got on their knees to beg for her forgiveness. She had a cold and stern look on her face as she took out an envelope from her breast pocket and handed it to them. Inside was an invoice for $70,000. Listed there were, of course, the goods purchased with her stolen card, as well as the estimated cost for the Ferrari repairs. Towards the end of the items, however, was also listed the repairs on the hotel parking lot's fence, which was destroyed in the accident, as well as a hefty fine for reckless driving. Megan told them they should both be grateful that she didn't call the police on them or sue them for damages. She said she was being generous and merciful by giving them a chance to pay her back. Now, Flora is working at one of Megan's husband's resorts. She has to do all kinds of menial and humiliating tasks, such as cleaning toilets, scrubbing floors, and serving rude guests. Meanwhile, Daniel had to drop out of college and find a job at a company owned by a friend of Megan's. He has to work long hours in a cubicle, doing boring and tedious paperwork. He also has to endure the constant mockery and harassment of his boss and co-workers, who know he is there only because of Megan's influence. She made sure to wish them both good luck in paying back every single dime they owe. She also said she would be keeping an eye on them and monitoring their progress. She still goes to check on the two of them periodically. I think she gets some kind of sick pleasure out of seeing them both work so hard for what they did to her. She always has a smug smile on her face when she visits them. She says she is just being friendly and supportive, but I know she is really enjoying their misery.